Yes people, what is good? I am BA back once again with another reaction in the Band of Brothers series. This is episode 5 and it is called Crossroads last episode. We saw how brutal it was for new recruits coming over there, both by how they were treated by some of the other elitist soldiers that didn't feel they deserved certain things, and also the brutality they were just thrown into instantaneously. It was absolutely mayhem again last episode, sneak attacks all over, basically par for the course at this point that things go horribly wrong in one way or another. Also, shout outs to James McAvoy who randomly just popped up for that one episode, had a couple lines of dialogue dialogue, then got shot in the face. Big him up, must have been an early role for him not to get much screen time, but it was still cool to see him. Shows you how legendary this cast is. Not only did they cast great actors at the time it was made, but they cast people who would go on to be great actors long after it had finished. And then we saw, I don't know the actor's name, but I was calling him Rudy last episode. He looks like Sean Austin, but it's not Sean Austin. That guy who got caught behind enemy lines. It was an interesting little story and proper made you think about what it would be like in the shoes of a soldier who was unfortunately left behind. And in every battle in history that's got to have happened to at least one guy on the losing side, whether it was in medieval times or fucking Egypt, the Mongolian Empire, ancient Rome, all the way to now, and to imagine these poor people's quests to get back to safety while walking through dead bodies and the only people left alive are the victorious enemies. And it again showed why this show is called Band of Brothers, because so many of them volunteered to go and get him back safely, but by the time they'd even rallied together and headed over there, he had already escaped by himself and was comfortably driving back to them. So at least it was a somewhat happy ending last episode. You gotta hold on to these small happy endings when you can get them. Because of course, the very last thing we all heard was that they needed to get moving and they were back out on yet another mission, which I'm guessing is what is gonna be this week's. And like always, I cannot wait to get into it. So without further ado, this is episode 5, Crossroads. Let's check it out and see what it's saying to it. You guys probably know what I'm thinking but I've put a ban on 35mm talk, okay? That's the last time you will hear that numerical order in this episode. I might be retreading old ground, but as Morpheus said, there's a difference between knowing the path and walking it, okay? So go fuck yourself. If you're a leader, you lead the way. Not just on the easy ones, you take the tough ones too. If only all leaders thought like that. Most of them are behind their army or thousands of miles away from their army. Some of the officers... Uh I don't think I would follow them in the water. What a harrowing thing to think about some of the people you're working with. Like These are guys guarding your life. If you sense ineptitude, I would rather walk alone than walk with dumbasses. I don't know how he survived. I'm going to distract myself by his ear hairs to stop me from feeling sad that he's teary-eyed. I mean, I could handle the getting killed part, but fuck this jogging shit. Oh, you got caught slipping, my German compadre. That was a, a strange opening to the episode. Are we going to cut back to that scene or something? Just seeing a random guy sprint through a field and then put a finishing shot in a German soldier's chest. It was just, seemed a bit out of context almost. Come on, come on, let's go. Okay. Oh. Yeah, get the fuck up off his space and I'll treat you like the copy machine. Oh, that's my own piss for Christ's sake! Gross! I was going to call him office space for the rest of this show, but I think maybe off piss face is more fitting. Pick a team from Easy Company and get them back across the Rhine as fast as possible. 140 men. Canadian engineers have supplied six boats. Dick looks deep in thought. He's obviously got a one-track mind. Says Colonel Dolby in every way possible. If you need anything at all, you come to me. It could do with some bleach and an antibacterial wipe, now you mention it. I miss those old school typewriters, such a satisfying feeling hitting the keys. And when you get to a new line, fucking forget about it. New guys giving the replacements the what for and why is. I swear one of them was never shaved. It's one thing, you know, going fighting in a war when you're in your mid-twenties or something like that. You've got a greater understanding of what life is. But see these jumped up 18-year-olds that just think that that's what they need to do. Years later, they may have had a completely different opinion on it all. And they just died at that age and will never know. This is an interesting episode just because 
the way it's edited so far is so drastically different than every other episode. It's actually standing out for its like brief, choppy nature. It's cutting to the point, and many of the scenes so far have been short and sudden, with quick juxtapositions to completely different places. Regimental headquarters. But that's three miles away. Why are they giving away their position? You would assume that was bait if they were three miles away from any decent target. Of course, rifle in hand, jumping over the verge, Dick just can't wait to discharge. I think he just said fist the guy. This is going to be rough. I hope this isn't an ambush, because this is actually a very coordinated, silent attack. And if they walk into just yet another perilous firefight, I'm going to feel bad for them. Mortars deploy here. First squad on me. I mean, they were doomed the second whatever dickhead decided to call this company easy while giving them all the hardest missions. Some general somewhere's chuckling behind a desk at his sense of irony. Combining watching these five episodes so far, along with my knowledge of Call of Duty World at War, I'm assuming the two primary weapons of soldiers on the American side in World War II was the Thompson and the M1 Garand. And they've also got heavy machine guns, obviously. Nice! It's the exact opposite of what I thought was going to happen. Easy Company actually get to sneak attack somebody today. Well, this is a first. They'll be fucking excellent at it. All they needed to do was watch and learn. Bring up oil and Bacardi, go! It makes you realise how great a format television is for war material. All I've ever seen really is war movies, but watching this, it makes complete sense because the best settings I find in TV shows are ones that increase the chances of heightened drama. What's the highest kinds of drama you can get? Like death. So what fields increase the chances of death and thus your show can have a heightened drama because you can have more deaths and it's not forced. So things like the mafia work well because people get shot. Things like war work well because you can literally have every single episode be peppered with segments of action and it still be completely organic because they're in a fucking war zone. So yeah, brilliant place for heightened drama. Go. Enter. Wow, we're seeing such a quick montage. This episode is almost like a mission compilation. I don't know why I'm still doing this. Want drinking? It's nice to see Dick share some liquid with Piss Face. His character is kind of strange to figure out, in the sense that he doesn't seem the most hardcore patriotic, he doesn't seem the most tactical or soldierly. It's literally like someone's grabbed an accountant and been like, do you want a high-ranking position in the army? I wonder if any soldier got, like, unnecessarily good with a bayonet gun, like he could wield it like a sword. Man. How disorientating does that look? Okay, so I'm guessing that was the start of the episode we just saw there. And you know, because we've been siding with these guys, it's easy to be like, yes, nice, finally, they're getting some kills, but at the end of the day, there is a malarkey in the German people's side, you know what I mean? There is all sorts of nice guys who are just trying to do what they think is right for their country because their government have brainwashed them. Damn, that one German dude went down empty in the clip. Doesn't look like any of these guys are going to get out of here alive, or very few if any. And even under the conditions of a complete sneak attack, they don't leave without any casualties. No pun coming this time. Dick's memoir must have actually been an incredible thing to read if this soldier really did write his memoirs like we're seeing. You have one round. Johnny, how many prisoners do we have? 
Got 11 right now, sir. Oh, is this the guy who's just been fucking executing everyone? Alive. Yes, sir. You probably should have took the grenade off the guy as well. He seems the type. You would be pissed off if you were the one guy that was wounded on your side, though. Everyone else fine, and you were the one. You would never hear the end of it off the rest of your soldiers. Captain Winters? It's right down there, sir. All right, carry on. Yeah, interesting character. Do not know what is going on in his mind. I mean, I was about to say it seems like he doesn't really want to be there, but fucking hell, the same can be said of absolutely every human. I mean, in a different way, though. He seems, like, disconnected, almost. 22 wounded, huh? You okay? Yeah, one killed. Oh, okay, so 22 wounded and one killed. It wasn't just the one guy we saw get shot in the foot. You got a drink? Of water? Yeah, it's water. He's probably got about three casks on him. That's just the one that happens to have water in it. The rest will get you ready for death. That's what ticks can do. That's what ticks can do. That's all I'm saying. They hit 2nd Battalion CP in force. He was organizing the defense. Really hard to get your head around, you know, returning to these quiet moments of regrouping and just learning of who's still alive and who isn't. It would make me really not want to care about anyone. Like, I would still want to fight to the death to keep everyone alive, but I wouldn't want to be friends with any of them. Because I wouldn't be able to get through my days if every fucking night one another one of my friends had dropped dead. Who do you think would be taking over easy, sir? Moose Heiliger can command easy company. No way, Dick's getting moved away from Easy Company. Not sure if he's happy with that or not. But that's a shame if this character just leaves the show now. A, because he's been a great leader, and B, what the fuck am I going to do without my dick puns? Well, rank does have its privileges. Orderly, huh? I suppose you do stuff like get coffee. Okay, at least Dick's still in the show. He basically just got moved to a little tent thing. I'm assuming that means he no longer has to go out onto the field though, so at least his life is no longer in jeopardy. Operation Pegasus is set to go off. I thought I might give you the heads up. Pegasus? Yeah. I don't recognize this new leader. Know how many times you want to cross a river? If there really are 140 Brits in hiding over there, three trips. Speed is the key. Yeah, this guy seems competent enough, but in Dick's mind, he'll feel a responsibility to every single one of those guys, so the fact that he can no longer actively look over them in the field, he'll feel the same as like when a parent lets their kids go out. He'll be sitting there anxious until everybody returns. Yeah. You run into any bacon sandwich, do the same, all right? That was a funny two-way conversation. It was basically Dick saying, you know, if you guys need me out there in any way, I'm happy to pick up a gun and come back into the field. And Office Space saying back, bro, they've desk job, you. Yeah? Fucking make yourself a coffee and shut the fuck up. Lester. Square. Come on in. Welcome back, sir. Good to be back. Well, at least we can tell the difference between British and American soldiers this episode with the handy hats. Be back shortly. Let's see what the bumbling, comedic, relief British idiots get up to this episode then, shall we? <laughs> I know I mentioned it last episode, but seriously, no wonder Americans are so patriotic when this is how the media portrays other nations. No wonder a whole generation of Americans grew up going like, you know, dumb inferior Brits. No wonder. These shows literally make us dumb inferior Brits. You lot grew up watching it, that's what we are. Fully understand how it can happen. Victory! And cry! Cry! Thank fuck, I was expecting him to fuck his speech up. He got a little cheer off everyone and everything. Knocked it out of the park. Most competent thing I've seen a British guy do in this entire show. Three sentences. Halt! It's moved! Hold your fire! What the fuck? Who the fuck did that? Oh my god. You absolute idiot. Oh man. This absolute idiot has just shot the new Easy Company leader, probably dead. If I was a soldier and I was like fatally dying from wounds that some idiot on my own side had just given me, oh, I would be so furious. That would be the most infuriating way to die. He's in a lot of pain, Doc. We didn't know what to do. Yeah, well, you ought to. You know, you are officers, you are grown-ups, you ought to know. And that's two in two episodes, because last episode, that guy accidentally bayoneted his own man, and now we've got some friendly fire shit. I mean, if these guys aren't getting shot up by the enemy, they're accidentally shooting one another. How's Lieutenant Dyke doing? 
Three weeks in Holland, the guys are already calling him Foxhole Norman. Not the best nickname for the new leader at Easy Company. Got a letter for you here from Moose. It's no disrespect, like, I think all sorts of faces can be cool and unique, but the fact that this guy has a slight underbite, or at least a pouted lower lip, gives him so much more, like, unique, memorable traits as a character to me. I think that's really important when you're building an ensemble cast. Nowadays, I think ensemble casts are ruined when everyone looks like a bland cover model, do you know what I'm saying? And I think ensemble casts are so much better when they're all just memorable people, not all necessarily perfect human beings but like memorable characters both facially posture wise the way they talk and their mannerisms what's that a piece of paper i don't want to see another piece of paper look at the way that shit's framed and lit this looks so good city of light that's 48 hour pass it's been decided that you need a little dose of civilization bon voyage Yes, Dick's getting a couple of days off. It is about time. He genuinely deserves this shit. He's been a great leader, and I feel like he would probably enjoy it more than just having to sit at our desk. Also mad how sometimes countries are like disjointed like that during times of war. You know, there's places right now which are active battlegrounds, but then you can just have a weekend in Paris and fucking everything's all good and then you take a little train back to the war. We are now boarding the 2pm to the war. Oh wow, that was such a dope little edit. How that little flicker of subway lights was so similar to a muzzle flash. Gotta love really clever editing like that. And I guess what he's experiencing could be described as early onset PTSD. That is the fucking horrible truth about it all, you know? He basically shot a German guy that could have just as easily have been that French guy on the bus or anyone else, man. These are just kids doing what they think's right at the time. They don't know nothing about life and their government tells them that they're right. So they're like, okay, we're right. And then the government tells them that they're the good guys. And they're like, okay, we're the good guys. And then the government tells them that there's a horrible enemy in the world that needs to be stopped or the world itself is in jeopardy and their nation is in jeopardy. And they think, oh, oh wow, so I have a chance to fight against a great evil and do good and then they get sent off but in reality they're killing a fucking 18 year old kid. That's the harsh reality of war. It's why I'm like, not anti-war because you know, war is necessary, war is natural but I'd definitely rather not have anything to do with it. I think that guy at the subway station wanted a little bit of dick. I don't think dick was interested, he'd just come out of the tunnel. I don't know what fashion designers the worldwide militaries have hooked up with in the past, except Germany, of course, Hugo Boss. But uh, they certainly had a way of making some creative ass hat shapes, you gotta give them it. It's like military leaders just sit down and think, what hat hasn't been done yet? That's our fucking hat, right? Are you sure, sir? It looks a bit silly. It's never been done. We will be known as people with those hats. Is that a good thing? Where you been? I've been looking all over for you. Well done, I was at home in Tonawanda, but then Hitler started this whole thing, so now I'm here. (laughs) (laughs) Got to appreciate a bit of dry wit in such a perilous situation. 3,600 left. What are you going to do with all that dough? Blow most of it in Paris as soon as possible. Malarkey's going to die now, isn't he? Like, people don't get things like this without repercussions. No wounds, Hill. Oh, Oh my God, you have been hit with a fucking death ray. Admit you bleach your hair. It's a real corker. Yeah, you made it sound real good. Thank God this guy hasn't started a reaction channel. I'd be in trouble. All officers report to respective HQs. All passes are cancelled. I fucking knew it. There is never a single scene in this show of these guys chilling and having fun without their passes getting cancelled and them getting told to go into another battle. No wonder all these guys were loaded on speed and amphetamines in World War II. That is one thing they don't show you in war films. How many uppers the government was supplying these troops to keep fucking wild in the trenches. All these dudes were on fucking speed and amphetamines, charging at you with a bloodlust, been up three days, ain't even listened to no music or nothing, or had a drink. Do you know how crazy that is? I mean, it's got to be terrifying getting charged by a guy with bloodshot eyes, manically screaming at you, 
who would also suck your dick for an eight ball. As many as you can scrounge. We don't know if we'll be resupplied or not. Yes, sir. What about ammo? There is no more ammo. I think Dick's actually moving out again on this mission. He will love this. He does not suit a desk job position. He certainly earned it, and I would like to see him have a peaceful life, but he doesn't suit it. He's definitely better suited in the field leading. Cause, to be honest, with a worse leader, these last three episodes, the amount of people that Easy Company would have lost would have definitely have been more. He 100% made lots of smart decisions throughout those episodes. I want to know what they're sending us. What the hell are we supposed to do with no ammo? How are you meant to kill people without a weapon to kill? It's like that scene in Aliens. Fuck are we supposed to use harsh language? Hey, stand back, guys. I've been holding this for the last hour. Still a bit disrespectful to piss on your own transport van, but, you know, in times of need, these things happen. Do you defend this area? Sir. Sure. See in the earlier scene in this episode where they snuck attack all those Germans, surely they should have sifted through that field for a good 15-20 minutes finding any shells they could or rifles which worked, sidearms, shit like that, accumulating weaponry. Because this low ammo shit is no joke. What's going on? You're going the wrong way. What is this? This is like a funeral procession. You gotta get out of here. You just got here. Your ammo. Come on, take it. Oh no, this is gonna be the roughest fight they've had yet. I can feel it. Hey, come hey, on. Who's got ammo? Got ammo? Got ammo? Look how defeated every single one of these guys is. There'll be tough guys in amongst this group, do you know what I'm saying? And they're all heads down, fucking done. So I do not know what awaits Easy Company, but this is just gonna be another bloodbath. I mean, they've just been told the Germans have Panzer tanks. I don't see a single tank here for the Americans. There's an ammo dump, so. Here. Oh well, at least everybody's got ammunition now. You know, at least they can fire their guns and not just have to carry them about. Panzer Division's about to cut the road south. <laughs> Fuck off. I've completely forgotten a dude's name, but I know the guy, the late night guy. What the fuck are you doing in this show? Even Saturday Night Live alumni are showing up in this shit. <laughs> Can't wait for the Pee Wee Herman cameo next episode. Everyone looks really cold as well. This must have been a cold day filming. And Dick just looks happy to be back doing what he's good at, marching out with his company. So next episode is just going to be easy company going through the woods against this German sneak attack that destroyed the morale of a whole army of other soldiers. Okay, and that was episode 5 of Band of Brothers, Crossroads, and I will be back in just a minute with my thoughts on that. So, Crossroads, what did I think of that? A very unique episode for many reasons, but the main one was the way it was edited and paced. The way it kept cutting back to Dick at his typewriter talking about these little operations they were doing. Then we were getting quick cuts to the operations in question. Then back to him at his typewriter. It just felt like it was cramming more in than usual, but in a good way. Like the way great shit does quick scenes and has brief, brisk cuts between things. Like um, Goodfellas is a perfect example. If you watch the first 20 five minutes of that film it's paced so brilliantly and it like stands out when shit's jumping at you and hits you like that there are many people that try to replicate that editing style but after a while it becomes like obvious to the eye to the point where it seems forced whereas this was that same style but it was just done brilliantly and again felt natural and a lot of these episodes when it actually goes into the battles they can be quite similar because at the end of the day much of this is taking place in open fields and you know they have the same weapons it's the same sort of shit just again and again which is what war is you can't expect the fight scenes to have so many set pieces or variables to them war is just brutality sequentially time and time again until some shit goes down or someone gives up but at least we got to see the flip side of it this episode they actually spotted the germans before they themselves were spotted and moved into a position to flank and sneak attack them and minus a single death and 20 something casualties it was basically a pretty successful mission the sad side of it is it makes you realise that like, no matter who's doing the shooting and no matter who's taking the bullets, these are just men that are trying to do what they think is right and sometimes you got to kill a fucking kid and 
It's all bloody and grey and grisly and that's just what war is. But yeah, this episode did a great job of driving that point home by spending time showing that young soldier that Dick had to shoot, then showing Dick looking at that kid on the bus and getting a little flash of that soldier's face in him because he could have just as easily have been that kid on the bus. Also on that subway scene, when the lights flickered for a moment and he got the flashback to the muzzle flash, it was so brilliantly done. I'd also suggest that after the war, he's going to have some very bad PTSD. SD to deal with. Also, congrats to Dick for getting the promotion. Very deserving of it, but as I said, clearly not where he feels comfortable, nor, in my opinion, where he's the most effective, because while he does have a good mind for war, he's also good at instantly applicating it, making off-the-cuff and in a second decisions and these are the decisions which determine life and death in many instances of actual war you've got to be quick on your feet you've got to think quick and you've got to make the right decisions within a nanosecond that only comes from generally being savvy beforehand you can't become a genius in that moment you've got to know what you're doing before and he's shown himself to both know what he's doing and be able to make the right calls on the fly so even though the episode ended with him back in the field I don't know if that's him back in control of easy company. If it's not, I've got a feeling that they're going to suffer way more casualties now he's not actively watching over them on the field and that's no disrespect to them as soldiers, that's more me giving him respect as the great leader he was or he's been shown to be thus far. And let me know in the comments if this dude really did write memoirs like we're seeing with him sitting at his typewriter because holy shit that would have been a crazy read. This guy just went on death mission after death mission and managed to so far come back in one piece pretty miraculous and even if you're like me and aren't too interested in war just hearing about a fucking crazy life someone lived is always interesting and this dude certainly lived a crazy life and as always i cannot wait to see what happens in this show next week if you have liked this video click like subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this ring the bell to be notified as to when they drop if there's anything you want to talk about comment down below and share this around to anyone you think might appreciate it or want to watch these reactions along with us. My Patreon link is down in the description. If you become a patron you get access to my blog, you get access to these reactions I put on YouTube a month and a half in advance and you also get access to full length versions of everything I react to. So consider becoming a patron it helps me and my channel out so much and until next time I have been BA. Peace.